another question I've been asked quite a lot is about how is it best to make multiple objects? Now, there is a range of ways of doing this, but I'll show you the most common uh, approach to this. So let's take a much simpler example. So I've got stripped it back quite a lot and we've got a character class with just three properties, name, health, and power. Now you've seen in the past, you can make characters like this and you know as a hero for example we've passed the relevant arguments over to build the character and the same for a villain now this is all well and good when you want to make individual people like this but in a adventure game scenario you, if we're sticking with the characters as the example you might want to come across a horde of zombies so you want to have like i don't know 50 low powered zombies or something like that um in a more practical example you could be making in a not too long distant future if you carry on watching all the videos you might be making like a user interface of some kind of particle simulator or something like that and you want loads of particles all over your screen that have independent attributes but are bouncing around now either way you've got to think instead of storing an individual character in a variable we've got to think of putting them in a data structure and referencing the characters by their location in the data structure or key if it's a dictionary and again you might want to think of making them within a loop so let's take our simple example here so on purpose i've got some a list of names at the top because i'm going to try and randomize the generation of my characters to a point so i'm going to import random and this is so i'm not having to set them all and they're all going to be different and I'm going to make a list of characters. So I'm going to do zombies. And that equals an empty list. So then what I want to do is I want to loop through and make so many zombies. So I'm going to say, let's make a um, hundred zombies. For I in range a uh, hundred. And then what we're effectively doing is we're creating this line here that makes an object, but we're going to do that in an append for the zombies list. So I'm going to do zombies dot append. We now know append is actually a method in itself. And I'm going to append an instance of a character. But here, I don't want them all to be the same. So I'm going to do random dot choice which if you haven't seen it before is a way of getting a random item from a list so i'm going to do random dot choice names so that's going to pull a random name from my list of five up there and then here i'm going to do a uh, random dot rand int and i'll pass it a number so i'm going to do a random number between one and a hundred for the health and a random number between one and 25 for the power so what i've then got if i run it it won't look like very much uh so random missing one required positional argument random must be two parameters it's been a while since i've used it so it'll be one comma so it'll be start and end when i run it yeah that's running fine so i've now actually got 102 characters i've got the hero and the villain and then i've got 100 zombies that are all stored in this list now if i want to access any information about the zombies i could print them out now if i print out and i'm going to do this in another video but if i print out just an object so like when i print out hero for example hero on its own is going to look a little bit messy so i'm going to do this in the next video and show you how to clean this up but you can access things can't you by doing like hero.name and we know that prints out rick well here i'm going to have to access the zombies individually so i need to reference the list and i need to say um like zombies square brackets position one dot name and when i run it the first uh, well, the second because it starts at zero the second zombie in my list is called steve so if we want to see all of the data together i could loop through the zombie so i could say for uh, zombie in zombies so z in zombies and i could print out the details so i could print uh, his name i'll do the format thing so name is um and it'll be 
Z dot name in the squiggly brackets. And then uh, what else did we have? We had uh, health and power. So health is Z dot health and power is Z dot power. So when I run that now, we can see we've got all these zombies and you can see they're all different. So while we've got repetitive names, that's only because my list only had five names in it that it was picking randomly from. But you can see they've all got different healths and they've all got different powers. And we've got a hundred of them that I could make hack my character or anything if I wanted to. Now, this is a very basic example. But if you want to make multiple objects, you've just got to think how do I want them stored? How, what data structure do I want to use? The list is a very, very common solution to this. I have seen people use dictionaries if they've got a good logic to how they want the keys stored and they want to reference them by something other than their index position. Because all of these I'm referencing by just looking at the list. Um, but it is completely up to you. But that that's the common solution to storing lots and lots of objects and making them on the fly.